My first question, and all of these questions are directed at both of you. Uh, there's a lot happening in this film, many small stories being told at once. It's a coming of age story, um, the immigration plight, family dynamics, and so much more. How do you decide what gets told and what is cut? It's really about the core feeling that you want to express with, with the story that you're telling, really. We wanted to tell the story of these two brothers on unequal grounds, one who is pursuing his dream with a sort of tunnel vision uh, determination uh, of you know, getting to be at NASA, and the other one who is struggling to find himself in, in a country that he doesn't feel welcome in and where he feels the challenges of, of the American dream are, are delusional. Uh, and so every scene had to kind of inform that. And if it wasn't at the service of that, it, it ended up on the, on, on, on the cutting floor. Uh, everything that, that went into this movie was kind of like life or death for us because we spent so much time and so much energy and really put all our eggs in this basket that we needed to tell a story that encompassed the, the experience, our original trauma of moving to the United States. And, and, you know, filtering all those experiences, our friends' experiences, Esteban's experiences, my experiences, our brothers, uh, into uh, an organic uh, uh, sequence uh, where everything informs the relationship of these two brothers. You know, I think that uh, uh, it, it was more of a cathartic kind of feeling uh, 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 to get to express those things uh, in, in, in that way. Um, yeah, yeah, I would say that. Awesome, thank you so much for that. Um, these characters feel really authentic and their dynamics are, they just feel really real. Are the characters based on people you know in your own lives or your own experiences? Yeah, yes, so they I, are. That's what, was, that's what I was getting at, you know, is that every single little detail of the, of the story we can draw a line directly of where that inspiration came from. Oh, when my dad says, oh, when my mom calls my dad Charito. Okay, okay, mi hermano took, uh, took my shirt and ripped it. Okay, uh, you know, the, this happened to me in school or that, you know, th this happened to Stevan when, he, uh, uh, when his papers got, you know, when he became undocumented. And so like uh, everything, uh, uh, directly inform the story and there is not a single line where we cannot trace back the origin of that inspiration. Yeah, and, and I want to say that Carly, the main character, is like the personification of my older brother, uh, who is this really hard-headed dude, brilliant, uh, academic, you know, uh, right now he's a veterinary surgeon and he was always determined like that. But always, you know, in his harsh, you know, nature and, and, and driven personality, he always cared deeply for his family. And, um, you know, what we chose to be, to make his goal and to going for NASA was something that was informed by Eric's younger brother, who right around the time where we started writing the story, he was starting his college, um, you know, education and actually chose to go into aerospace engineering. And so five years go by and, and Eric's younger brother graduates and he actually gets a job working for a company that builds satellites for NASA and the Space Force. And so it's a real case of art informing life and life informing art here. That's pretty amazing, I love that. Yeah. Um, it's refreshing to see a story told in both English and Spanish. I feel like it makes it feel a lot more authentic. Was it challenging to get that across when you were writing? It's, it wasn't challenging because that's the reality in which both of us exist. We are fully bilingual and fully bicultural. So that's just the world for us. Uh, and we really wanted to capture that in movies, you know, um, in terms of executing it on set, it, it was a little bit challenging because some of our actors, you know, they feel more comfortable in English and because a lot of the vernacular that we were using is, you know, Colombian slang. 
And so it doesn't necessarily roll off their tongue, but we were able to just, you know, create a really intimate space for them to feel comfortable and, and really n- capture that. Uh, because we really do feel like it's those little specific details that really make something authentic and universal. You know, I would say the opposite that Esteban said, that it wasn't, it wasn't easy, at least for me, to, uh, <laughs> to come up with a dialogue because it was such, such a process of iterations, you know, and we, we knew what the characters were supposed to sound like because we did the short film, but first we needed to communicate that in English. And somehow we had to communicate, you know, the way that Colombians would speak in English so that it would register in English readers. And then eventually when the, when the script got greenlit, we were like, okay, we need to translate now to Spanish. And so that process was, uh, was a little more, it was easier because it was a, a translation, but it was still a, a molding the language. Uh, and then when, it, when Esteban got to set, uh, a lot of the takes were because, because of what he said. No, no se dice así, se dice así. El, el, el acento no es en la E, sino en la O. Y, y, entonces, como que, eh, it was hard to eventually achieve what's on the screen because there were so many steps that led to that language being what we hear. Uh, but, but again, to Esteban's point, it was a natural thing that we needed, that we knew needed to be there uh, in this movie for, for it to feel uh, legitimate, organic. And it's a language that we have never kind of seen in the big screen. Uh, so yeah, it, it, was, it was both organic and it came easy to us, but it was iterative and, and hard to achieve in the end. Well, you nailed it. It felt organic. It felt natural. Awesome. The roles of Carly and Mateo feel also perfectly casted. How did you know that Mateo Arias and Moises Arias were the right fit for this film? This movie was made for them. Honestly, it was tailored for them because back in 2014, I was sitting on my couch watching a bootleg copy of The Kings of Summer. And in that movie, he breaks out into perfect Colombian Spanish, even though he's playing an Italian character. And I was just taken by surprise because I hadn't seen him act, even though he was, you know, coming from Hannah Montana playing Rico. I hadn't seen him. So he was a fresh face for me. And so he, that surprise really shook me to the core because it, it, it captured my experience and who I was in the United States. And so I said to myself, I really have to find a, word, a way to work with this kid. And I flagged it for Eric and both of us kind of went deep into the research of, of himself and found out that he had a brother And so when we found that this brother was also an actor, we just decided it's a story about brothers that we have to tell. And because Eric has brothers, I have brothers. It, came, it, came, it became really um, just a way of, of coming together th- thematically, but also of bringing you know, a, a natural relationship um, to the screen. It doesn't happen that often. So... Uh, it was a process of, of making the short film with them and seeing how much it worked because they are bringing honest feelings to play off each other and then growing that into a feature film where it goes through more of that range of emotions that um, they're able to play with and inform with their real life experiences. Wow. That's... We didn't know. We, we didn't know uh, what if this was gonna become a feature at all, you know, when we do, when we did the short film. And we, we, because we saw that uh, uh, little clip of him speaking uh, Colombian Spanish, uh, accented Spanish, because it was such a revelation. Uh, we knew that this, these two kids were unique in the world. They are Colombian Americans that have perfect accents in both languages that are actors coming from, from Disney. So when we came out here, when Esther moved out here, uh, we did this whole intricate plan to get to the script to their agent. Uh, and you know, he eventually read it and, and, and saw how specific it was for them. And he, was, he kindly uh, uh, gave it to them. 
but it was always from the beginning like if it weren't the brothers i don't think we we, we would have been able to make the short or i don't know if we would have even made the short uh because wow. it was it was them there was never an option b uh but luckily they read the script and and they did uh feel how how unique and tailor made it was for them and they stuck to to us you know we grew up relationship we grew our relationship through the four years that that it took us to write the script we collaborated with Theo in a few things and uh by the time it was green lit uh they were just uh they, they were those characters they were those guys they, you know. that's yeah. amazing thank you for that and um what has been the most rewarding part of this filmmaking experience for the two of you? Ooh, um, really seeing everything come together because for the longest time making this film felt like a dream, you know, that we kind of held on to working through the different iterations of the script, the long development process, the uncertainty of it all. But really seeing it come together, being on set, working with these actors, and then having the opportunity to premiere this film at the Sundance Film Festival in the U.S. dramatic competition for a film that has features a lot of Spanish just felt like surreal. We had several out-of-body experiences in that festival when the audience just received it with so much love, you know, grown men crying, you know, people coming up to us and embracing us for, for, you know, just the realization that people like themselves were on the big screen in this platform. It just felt so surreal and so fulfilling. That, that to me is something that uh, we'll cherish till yeah. the day I die. <laughs> it's completely true. I mean, it's, uh, it's what Juno Diaz said about, uh, 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 you know, the people of color uh, being like, like vampires because vampires, they don't have reflections. And so like mm -hmm. there's, there's this monster-like kind of uh, a feeling that we have because we don't see ourselves in the mirror. We're not reflected. And so th this was, uh, this is a legacy of ours to put up a big old freaking mirror for you to see yourself in it and, 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 and Decide whether you want to achieve great things like Carly or decide whether you want to follow your, what your, you know, your life. Like Mateo, both of them are valid, but you are here, you exist. And, uh, and I think that is, uh, that, that's my mission in life. That's why I came to Hollywood. That's why I'm doing these kinds of movies. That's why I will continue making these movies is because I want to uh, increase our, our cultural heritage and inspire people and, and, uh, and, and say, here I am, we exist, I exist, I am real, I'm valid, I'm smart. And, and, and next time maybe someone will see a Colombian, they will say, oh, look at that guy, drugs. But, oh, you know, I saw this movie where this Colombian kid was smart. And so there's a little more uh, nuanced stereotype there. Right, absolutely. And I had just have one last question. What do you hope audiences take away with them when they watch your film? Um, I, I, just this sense of, of belonging that they're not alienated from reality, um, but also that they get to reflect on, on their own experience um, as immigrants or as just kids trying to find a way in 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 life you know that success has success or the pursuit of happiness has different meanings for everybody and that every way is valid you know as long as you're able to be um honest with yourself and 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 honest with those who love you um it's really the essence of this film really mm -hmm. For, for the Latinx audience, uh, you know, I feel that it's, a, again, it's a, it's a big, big mirror of inclusion uh, to say, yes, this is real because I, I see it every day and I'm glad to see it. And for, you know, uh, Americans, it's a way for them to uh, humanize uh, people that look like us.
uh, and I think this process of exposing uh, a family and the humanity of the family and the complexities of someone and someone's dreams, I think that is uh, that's that's the uh, spreading the empathy. You know, like uh, this is a person, and we are all people, and uh, and we live in this earth. Um, so I think that's that is the the, the end goal for me with this movie. Absolutely. Well, you guys, congratulations on the film. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you for, again for taking the time to speak with us. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Thank you.